call to order the work session of the Trinidad Board at 9.03 a.m. Are you on the call? Campbell? Here. Chris? Here. Miller? Here. Michaels? Here. As I mentioned to Tom, I uh, put petitions for communications on the wrong agenda. I should have had this on the regular meeting agenda instead of the work session agenda, so I've asked him to move it back to the regular meeting agenda. That's the only correction I have for the agendas. And is he coming in a little bit later? He is. Okay. Yes. Miscellaneous items of discussion, key card holders, Steve? Uh, well, I, I just thought, oh, sure. Yes, I mean, it's in official. Your, in your packet, I printed out what we currently have. Um, size last communication was that she had wanted to make some, she had suggested some changes. He wanted to discuss that further. Um, go ahead, Steve. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to take some notes because really I'm, I'm here <laughs> more to get your guys' feedback than anything else. Because uh, sometimes it doesn't seem to be real efficient going back and forth uh, on, on the announcements that he's up here. From out of the way. So uh, I think what we were looking at uh, from from that one that you did is the last one, right? Yes. yes I, and I think you had addressed uh, the uh, um, events yeah. page and. I wasn't sure that you said something else about uh, stressing downtown or something of that effect. Uh, so can I just get to follow up and then you guys, let's get our input together, get this thing done. <laughs> yeah, no, I, we approved this money months ago, so I, I'm, I'm happy with what you got right here. I, you know, I know we can, we can kind of pick it to death because we all have so much to say, but I think uh, having the events on the inside just so that people know there's events, and the most important thing to me as somebody that hands out key cards to people at nine o'clock at night is that there's a city, you know. That's the reason why we have a picture of the city behind our front desk at the hotel. So when people are checking in, they all, hey, listen, there's a city. It's just not like, because how many people have you heard say, oh yeah, I drove through there. <laughs> you know, yeah, and that, you do that a lot. Um, so. so what I did was, um, well, Steve and I have gone back and forth on content and stuff like that. So I, I did add that to kind of make it flow with the visitor guide as far as the front cover. Um, I added the events on the inside for a conversation that we had earlier that we did want to list our events. Um, so I listed them by month. Um, Cy had brought up that the Blues Fest is doing several events now rather than just one. But I did put just the Blues Fest in August since that is our our regular event that doesn't change. So I stuck with the Blues Fest in August. That's fine. Um, and then I added the True Outdoors on the flap so that we can continue with that That's nice. um, piece as yeah. well. And then Steve pretty much designed the back page. Um, I added the Trinidad Tourism logo on the back and then... Of course, we have the website at the bottom and the QR code. So I think it's all inclusive. If there's anything else, if not, we'll go to print. Yes, I think everything is good. Okay, so we don't need to make any adjustments to the no. to the uh, events page. Okay, all right. So everything's good to go. So, okay, see so that was easy. We're all sitting here together. Yeah, we weren't going to punish you much. Okay. Bye. Okay, good to go. Thank you for putting this together. Thank you. It's really, yeah. really put together well. Wow, nice. Okay, well, you, you are. Thank you all for having me involved with you. Um, okay, and then I'll sit back down and, and we'll get to uh, uh, talking to you guys on another subject. Okay, that's good. Right. Okay, thanks. That, that was easy. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy. Uh, interview with uh, Don Richardson. For the, our open board seat. Donna, how are you this morning? Thanks, I don't recognize you outside of the pool. <laughs> 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Good morning.
Can we apologize for this taking so long? Um, yeah. I tried to explain that because you hadn't been a resident long enough in, in the county or the city that you didn't actually qualify. So we kind of had to hold you back a little bit until you were here for your full year. Um, that'll be up in December, but we can go ahead and take action since you wouldn't be seated until January. So we are ready with any questions. In your packet, you'll see uh, Dawn's citizen interest form. Um, expressing her interest in being a board member. So if you have any questions for Ms. Dawn. Chris, we'll start with you if you have any questions. Did anything, nothing's changed since this was, we saw this before, right? No. I would sell the information. Mm -hmm. Everything was pretty much the same. Other than the how long she's been there, which we could yeah. change to 12 months now. I, I have no questions waiting. I was ready six months ago. Three months ago. Camilla, do you have any no, questions? No, I have none here at all. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Give us your elevators. Yeah. Your elevator speech. Okay. Yeah. So um, I own a distillery and yeah, oh, we do all manufacturing in Denver and then we have a tasting room in Frisco, Colorado. We have been considering moving it down here we're more serious earlier in the year and a little less serious and now i'm kind of revisiting that and thinking about maybe <coughs> moving it down again um, we do have product in uh, several uh, establishments um, some of our products are seen in several establishments in town um, and you know i i wrote a grant for the distillers guild for the through the department of tourism a twenty five thousand dollar marketing grant that we got two years in a row to create a statewide tourism initiative to get more people to travel around the state and visit our establishments bringing taxpayer money into both our businesses and our communities um, because distilleries are fun right they're a fun place to go they're they're both um they're um, an experience as much as they're a place to get a drink. Um, and I think, you know, being part of a town like Trinidad, I've always wondered why it hasn't been more of a destination because it's so beautiful here, right? And the architecture is so amazing and there's wonderful assets. And um, with my work with the Department of Tourism and also my work with the town of Frisco, which is a very, very vibrant tourism town, I've learned a lot. And um, they interact with us as business owners really proactively. And um, they've been wonderful. And through COVID, it was hard. And they reached out to us every month or every two weeks we had meetings. And I, I just learned a lot about how to kind of interact with the city community and the business community back and forth and how to use that to um, promote more tourism in our communities. Um, so I'd like to. Yeah, you know, sit here and join you guys, and you know, maybe um, bring a, just a new perspective into the room. Yeah, I think that's great. I, I I appreciate the fact that you've been involved with the tourism, so you have a lot to bring to the table. I I, I like that, you know, and to uh, and that's what we need. We need new people with new ideas mm -hmm. to help us keep on going down the path that we're going. Yeah. So. And I've talked to Don on several locations and I think she would be a, a great addition to the tradition. Have you lived in Colorado? Uh, yeah, I, well, I'm from Utah originally. Um, and I moved to Colorado initially when I was about 14. Moved away for a little while to college in Durango. Went abroad for a few years and then I've been Consistently in Colorado since maybe seven, I believe. So I've been here a long time. Why turn the bed? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I I felt like Denver got too big for me a long time ago, to be honest. And um, I couldn't afford to live in Summit County where my tasting room is. And um, so I just spread a net over the whole state, and I've driven through. Right, times, right? Uh, about 10 years ago, I got off the road, and I was like, oh my gosh, the tech, this architecture is amazing, right? And it's so pretty, and I've always thought it's really beautiful 
especially coming from Santa Fe, like up over Raton Pass yeah. into town, right? Yeah. It just it's stunning when you see the San Gabriel Cristos and all of that. And I've always wondered. So I like to be a bit of an armchair um, city planner, and I've talked about like why it doesn't Trinidad have a place in people's hearts in Colorado. I mean, everybody has a connection here when you talk to people, but nobody comes here, or not very many people come here. I, I, I'm going to let you know something. Being a store owner yeah. down in Trinidad, mm -hmm. we have a lot of people coming to Trinidad out of Denver just for the day. Yeah. And they, I have met at least six families now mm -hmm. that are never going to move here. They don't have intention of moving here right away. But they come down here so often, they bought a home because every two weeks they're down here, and more and more. And I and I just kind of I just I'm kind of amazed how many people don't realize the people that are coming down here because I'm really the only you might be, but I'm really the only store owner in Trinidad. The people that are coming here out of Denver and out of Texas, maybe for the day, maybe just for a weekend. These are repeat customers that are coming down constantly. And the amount of people that I have met that bought their home. Uh, Arizona Liquors is one of the last persons I met. They're a wonderful couple. Two small kids, no intention to move down here, but they bought it, and they come down here every two weeks to stay for the week. You yeah. know, and four or five days. I think that's more and more common. And, and more and more common people are, are we're, I'm seeing that more and more common. It's just amazing uh, how, how it is. It just, I just mm -hmm. thought I'd throw that in. Since I didn't ask any questions, I will say, though, that the drive that you're talking about from Santa Fe, mm -hmm. the one from Texas, is even more awesome. So. I'm going to spend a lot of time in Texas. I'm going to say, so happy to drive. Okay, well. <laughs> sure. I'll have to put that on my list of things. I don't spend as much time as I used to. So. Mm -hmm. Well, Don, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you for mm -hmm. showing interest in coming in, and we, we welcome you. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll carry this over into the regular session and they'll vote on it eventually. Well, and then I will send you a letter. Okay. Well, do what we're going to do. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming, John. Yeah, and you're welcome to stay for the meeting. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Financial review. So I put together a quick look. Um, recap of the year's financials as it relates to the tourism board. I didn't include the trolley financials or the welcome center, uh, but I can do that if you like. There's just nothing outstanding there. Uh, but I wanted you to have um, um, a quick look at where you spent your money, how much you spent, and what you have at the end of the year. So I started with outside contract services. We are paying for co-designer lease solutions for the website under outside contract services. We also uh, reprinted the Studio 6 visitor guide. Um, you also invested in the Sandy Highway of Legends as a member. And then the publication printers is the actual printing of the visitor guide. So you um, have about $15,000 left over that we're probably not going to spend before the end of the year, but that's your balance. Maury, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Have you gone through a lot of the visitor guides through the, since we've been We're about probably a third through. A third through? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now we continue to reprint the restaurant inserts as we need to because um, we have restaurants coming and going, mm -hmm. um, as always. So <coughs> there's one more reprint that we'll be doing, but it won't hit your financials until 2022. Okay, thank you. Um, and then advertising and publications, you start out with a budget of 60,000, you have a balance of about 10,000 left. Uh, and these are all the advertising and publications that you did throughout the year, which included the Gravel Guide ad, True West Magazine, um, the Visitor Guide, KCRT, uh, Chronicle News, the Raton Visitor Guide, you did an advertisement this year, you did an ad in Mountains and Mesas for the World Journal. Uh, Cedar Street Printing was under this line item. There's your printing for your printing cost of your <coughs> restaurant ins er, inserts. Uh, Scenic Highway of Legends, we did a reprint of that. Go Travel Sites is the website that generates the reader leads for our fulfillment. 
Uh, Bonesky Designs was a grant uh, to reprint the gravel guide. We put that under advertising and publications for your request. Uh, Colorado National Parks Journal, USA Today, Colorado Life, the State Vacation Guide, and then um, there was a grant that you approved for the Trinidad Outdoor Recreation Office um, that you requested be also placed under advertising and publications. So those are all your advertisements for the year. Uh, billboards, you only had two, Mile High, Mile High Outdoor, which is at the Monument Exit. Um, and out front media, which is the billboard just um, south of Trinidad. And then the cost for the billboard design for the outdoor recreation with the bicycles and fishing, etc., that you had approved. So you started out with a budget of 18000 You have a balance of $838. Postage and shipping, um, that's self explanatory. That's the postage that we use for the to mail out the fulfillment pieces for the reader leads that are generated by both the CTO's um, vacation guide and um, go travel sites. Training travel and mileage, uh, we did not have a budget for that last year or this year. Um, so in speaking with the finance department, we will move monies from another line item to cover this since there were several of you that went to the governor's conference, or two of you that went to the governor's conference. Uh, dues and subscriptions, um, we did. We only had $100 budgeted for that. There's another line item that we will have to um, move monies from. Um, the chamber luncheon was a sponsorship and meals. Uh, we um, renewed the GoDaddy website the, the tourism website, we had to do a renew on that, which is an annual expense. The event calendar had to be updated, so there was a cost for that. And then Bluehost, uh, those two costs for Bluehost are also for the website. So we moved from um, um, GoDaddy to Bluehost. Um, it was a better fit, so you did approve that expense. So you started out with um, $100 for that, and we expended 946 over, so we will move some monies for that. Office supplies, um, we had a budget of $500. I didn't use any of those. Uh, most of the office supplies and expenses that are incurred by me to manage tourism um, actually come from the Welcome Center. So I use the Welcome Center's printer, and the printer is uh, the copier um, falls under Welcome Center expenses. Um, office supplies are usually gathered from City Hall, so copy paper, you know, all that type of stuff. So we so, don't actually have um, operating expenses for offices. So you don't need to reimburse the Welcome Center any of that five hundred. Um. No, I don't think so. I, think all right. it, I mean, it falls under a tourism fund either way. Uh, and there is a line item in the Welcome Center that I have not expended yet. So, I mean, or overexpended, I should say. <coughs> Local festival funding. These are the grants that you approved for the year. You started out with 60000 You funded, a, uh, by grant, the Blues Fest, the Creative District for the 911 Firefighters um, display. Uh, Trinidad Office of Outdoor Recreation, you have approved for advertising and publications. So that $3,000, although it was a grant, went, you had requested that it be taken out of um, advertising and publications. So that $3,000 is actually in a different line um, uh, category. Calexico experience, uh, Trinidad Historical Society was the letters, uh, the German letters, the POW letters. That event triggers baseball. Uh, Creative District had proposed a chat book that they applied for. She did not move forward with that, so that uh, $1,500 was not claimed. Main Street Group Wayfinding Signage, that also comes out of advertising and publications, although it was a grant that they applied for. Um, now, is that the one for the banners? Yes. 
No. Have you heard anything about? I did see on? a couple of expenditure line items in that I didn't recognize that I'm actually in discussion with with Cheryl. Okay. That I am thinking is, go with this, uh, but I didn't sign off on them, so I need is, to discuss is it with her. It, is it the couple that they think uh, that designed them? Might be, yes. It, okay. it looked like design work. Yeah. Is, so, is there any way that we could go forward with that, or? Uh, well, with, the, the grant was already approved for Main right. Street Group, so I don't know how. If you want to have conversation with the Main Street Group on that, conversation. Right, so that grant was given way back in <coughs> the beginning of the year, and we saw nothing. Well, it was. Um, yeah, I have not seen we anything seen produced anything. yet. So, would you like to invite them to the next meeting, and we can? I, I would. Okay. Yeah, at least in January to, so we could find out what's going on because they, that was approved way at the beginning of the year and they haven't done anything. It's kind of late to do anything this year. Well, we could do it for next year. For next year, yeah. yeah you know. Um, Entertainment District Cups, that was an agreement to pay, uh, reimburse Wally for his expenses when he purchased the cups. And I don't have a cost there, uh, but I will find out what that is. Lifetime Fitness Rad Race, uh, Branson High Low Gravel Grinder, Trinidad Golf Association, the Southwest Chief Comedy Festival, Art Arcade, and the A.R. Mitchell Museum. is $2,000, so if you'll write that in there. I don't know why I don't have it. <clears throat> so those were your festival funding expenses. You have, you did, we did really good. You have $19 left. $19. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Question, Marty. They were... I know there were several that we were waiting for some uh, feedback on their expenses, you know, proof that they followed, you know, our request. And, and, uh, right, and I have probably everything that you need if you would like to see that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that. Yeah, they all We also have one from Wally from the, the original when he applied for the grant for the. Comedy the, Festival? The, yeah. It's that one. It Southwest the, Chief. It's a third line item from the bottom. Uh, this was the first one. No, the one that we gave him twenty thousand. Did he? He had that was a, last year. Right. Oh, he, yeah. had, he hadn't turned nothing. <coughs> did yeah, he, he did. He did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Everything was fulfilled. Right. So they are fulfilling. They are sending in their tear sheets, um, and it is noted that they have to um, recognize the tourism board for their funding and support, and they all did. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. How much money do we have in reserve, Marty? I don't know. It doesn't come up on my reports. Mm -hmm. It's like 340. How much? There's like 341,000. More than enough for that trip to Cabo. <clears throat> yeah. Check Let's go. Mm -hmm. and I, I do have everything for uh, us purchasing a van. We just I haven't sent everything to anybody. I'm just kind of waiting until after the first of the year for some things and then we'll. Get to get one on it for the next year. And hopefully, we could have it by the time uh, the summer season starts. That would be great. So that's that's the next thing. With that fifteen thousand dollars extra, I know it's sort of a last minute thing, but is there anything we could do to help uh, drive that economic development downtown for tourism? With maybe like you know, we had talked in years past about a Santa's list, like what to do for uh, Santa's list. For the five-year-old nephew, buy I mean, a is it yeah. too late? Yeah. Buy a pass at karate or something, and try to educate our locals what all the different businesses that you can still buy gifts at downtown. You know. Yeah, I think that's, that's yeah there's no I, the finances expenditures can I mean we're done for the year. I think that it's a little late. Like, so that fifteen thousand just rolls into the reserve. Into, no, it is. It goes into it's the gone. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. If you don't use it, it's gone, right? I checked with Cheryl to see if they can roll it over. It should be able to. It should yeah. go. Where should it go? It either goes into reserve. It should go into reserve. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'll okay. check with Cheryl to make sure that's where it's going. I it don't can. assume that because I had asked her if I didn't expend all of the volunteer uh, enhancement monies that are in my budget. Could I roll those into next year? And she said, no, it's gone. If you don't use it, you lose it. So well, the money so goes somewhere. The money has to go somewhere. It's <coughs> tourism money. It, doesn't, it, it, it can't go into the 
the city coffers, by the way, that were. It goes. It should go yes. back to reserves. Yeah. Into reserves. Yeah. Yeah. It should go back to reserves. Yeah. And my personal feeling on that is that you know, if it's tourism tax dollars, and that's where it's at. It's yeah, it's where it's at. It it it's there. there. It's not like it's gone. It was right. there. We were pulling it out of there. You can't. You can't just disappeared that yeah. kind of money and just yeah. say, pool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I took it. If you, that's the case, you why can we not do something before the end of the year? I mean, why are we cut off? Well, that was my question. Well, first. my question is to get something rolling right now, you won't get it rolling for another week, and you only got a week and a half, two weeks to left. The, the, only, the only thing we can right do now. is, mm -hmm. is run an ad in the Chronicle News about and other advertisements or on the radio. The last, we the last two that. weeks of Maybe our local citizens shopping in Trinidad. Don't don't forget. I Main believe Street, you know. the, sh the Chamber of Commerce is going to be doing their shop local campaign again. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been talking to Amy over there, and she has applied for the funding from. Um, I think they already done it. If I'm not mistaken. But I think we can. It's it's an it's an it's an it's an Thank you. Yeah. And it's only the eighth of the month, so I, I do think. Maybe an ad. Yeah. But you're not going to spend all that fifteen no, dollars. No, no. I, I just say to take some of that money and to promote, party. promote downtown. Which you know, <coughs> goes Christmas into our mission statement. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely use the combo. So, um, um, I, I think we should at least do something on the radio to radio on the TV. Those are those, those, those play your tourism board. Yeah. You know, it says Merry Christmas. You, you just don't forget. Yeah. We we we're already paid up with them, so we all we have to do is revise some some ads for through KCRT for shopping downtown. And I'll work with Marty and Brian. And that won't um, expend any money. So no, it's just so right. Right. no, no it's advertising the Chronicle News and just say the tourism. Thank so, everybody and well, Christmas ads on KCRT. You want to do something? Yeah, print yeah. as well with the Chronicle and the Journal, or and even even the the brochure that you have for eating out, put that in there in, in the chronicle. You know, don't forget these places to go and eat, you know, and, and just try to pull people into Main Street and commercial. Yeah, uh, you know, right the now there the, the library's got things going in to go into different shops. If you find mine is a book, and, you know, the people come in and look for the book, they do and they check it off because they get prizes <coughs> from the Chronicle News. Work in the world is doing one because they come in and they give you whenever you somebody shops, you give them coupons to do a do a raffle draw, do a, a drawing. So are, there are a few things that in my shop that if I can remember to give to people, except for these little kids in the book, that work in the world giving out coupons. I can't remember. Also the trolley. And yeah, the trolley. Yeah, and yes, people, the trolley. Remind people to ride the trolley. It is in fine print. It is in in the chronicle. Mm -hmm. If you just put it in this ad, you just make it a really, ad. a really big ad about promoting our downtown area and, and, our, you, and our restaurants. And you know what else we could do to promote the downtown area is where the trolley is going on with the lights, so people could know what 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 residents are on that list that the trolley goes by, and maybe they'll know and they could see something like that. Um, I know the trolley has gone twice now, right? Has it been a good ride? It started on the 3rd, it ran the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and then it'll start again tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. So it runs five days a week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and there's two, two, two times, 5.30 and 7. And how are they doing so far? How are they doing so far? Not very good. When Chris and I get the first night, I think we probably had 10 riders. Got 10, yeah. The first one, and none on the second. Because I have some friends that went to catch it, they missed it one night. But I think the weather has hurt us on that. Well, it's it's still early enough. December is like oh yeah, you're right. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it is early, and I and I think the weather has a lot to do with it. I think people get a little bit more cheery when there's snow. But maybe we can list. Is there a lot of houses listed? There's eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen. Maybe. I think I think that you know all of those. Where if you put something together, okay. just throw it at us. You know and. Anything you'd like to throw in there, Bill? Yeah. No, the no, I think well, there's a like the city of Trinidad and, and, right. and the tourism board, but keep our dollars at home. Yeah. Because okay. uh, there's so many areas in Trinidad that you can buy presents that people forget. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the main ones, <laughs> and it's not because Camilla's sitting here, is the experiences that you can give your children. Like, 
making the necklace, like uh, pottery that um, Raggio does, like um, giving your niece or nephew or your child karate lessons downtown, like giving dance lessons downtown, ways that we can keep money locally and how a kid would feel if you just got from your uncle three months worth of karate lessons, you know, or there's even other that fun things that you can buy in Trinidad. Even, even that Corazon uh, art, art like, yeah. you know, all the different artists that are involved well, in, yeah. in that. You know, Their jewelry, they got all that jewelry they made. You know, it's just uh, all the things that sort of these businesses down on Main Street have to offer. So. Yeah. You know, people, we get, we sort of get, I, all of us get sort of tunnel visioned into that same sort of, uh, you know, shirt or tie or something that you're buying for your loved ones. But we really have such a diverse, great, hip artist colony downtown that sell their wares that are really fun to get versus driving to Pueblo and buying something from Target or something, you know? It's just so many great things that get you tickets for Main Street if they did annual passes for this year for the theater. You know, there's so many fun different things, but sometimes people don't think about it. So just to educate our public about all the tourism related things, but how we can spend money locally. One thing I was going to mention to you, are you considering like a full page ad? Because yes. full page ad is like 800 bucks. That's, 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 that's one of the things that I was thinking that maybe what you could do is categorize dining. Yep. Artwork, yeah. or you can buy artwork, or you can buy you know uh, other right. things. Yeah. There you go. The one thing that you want to try to do though is make sure that you include everybody. Because yeah. yeah. I'll give you a good example. I was the prize here just recently. Uh, I guess there's a pamphlet out there of artists of where you can buy artwork, and some places were left out. Yeah. And I was. They yeah. got a hold of me, and it was pretty upsetting. Oh, uh, sure. from the I'm room. one of them. I agree. I'm sure. definitely one sure. of them. We just want to be able so to So I think make sure that you include. Places. It has to be all inclusive, so you yeah. got to make sure. I mean, and it's just so lovely to buy locally. I, 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 Do you, you need help? And I don't even know if you need to list yeah. all the stores and all the restaurants. Know. Just basically yeah. down, promote them. Because if you do leave yeah. off one uh, thing, like Phil said on this pamphlet, you know, uh, it was kind of hard to swallow on that one. I, the one good thing, the uh, one good thing just, about is go. the one good thing about it is the restaurants is we have a total thing of it, and maybe down in the future is that's what we should develop is kind of a uh, a total of every what everybody does under the line of merchandise. Yeah, we have on, yeah. So so well, see that's a that's a good thing to follow is is that right there, and then you're not you're including everyone. You have everything. And don't forget, all the restaurants downtown have gift certificates for your stocking stuffers, or just for, for you know, there's just so many lovely things. That we have. This is mechanics, but one of the things that I've seen, uh, it was out of love if they didn't deal with uh -huh. restaurants and gift shops. And they always put a, a deal in there. If you don't see your business in your lettuce, no. and that takes care of because we do miss in that yeah. way. It's a, uh, you read it, and it's not quite as and then hard to tell. Oh. And that and that covers that person that's missed. Right. Do something like that. But that's just a mechanics thing. I you know, I'll work with you on, on that. I think we should also have a budget for radio. Uh, at least the case here. We do. We do. Well, I'm an additional so I'm talking about some of this extra money that is geared just for the same thing. Whatever whatever we ask the case guard to do in in the month, they'll do for us. And then they will. So we do have we do have that yeah. I mean, there's just so many lovely ideas yeah. when you get down to it. You get a twenty dollars gift certificate for Coley's, so that your friends can go buy that. I mean, Camilla has so many. Mimica has so many. A. R. Mitchell has a beautiful gift shop across the street. The Corazon has lovely things. There's so many lovely things. I just think a full page out of all yeah. of those. Yeah, no, things. it's great. So if, if you need help, I'm, I'm I don't understand what you're, you're saying about the radio. Of course, if you ask them to rent something, you're going to run it. Mm -hmm. But we it's don't need to know how much money it's already paid. We get we so many ads paid. per month. Right. There is yeah. a form that's sent to me. Increase that for this sure. time. Yeah, yeah. We, we do increase the gauges bill. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. So we just have to open the market. If you have something that you want to do, they were, 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 they
Well, if you think I'm you need to I'm not talking about it. We've got people on the list. We just need to do this right without, you know, crowding you every four hours. But, you know, it's, it's just... It's some just, of those ads, we might have three ads exactly. in March because it's dead, and some of those ads we have... List. 50 of them in July. I listen to them a lot because yeah. I do, you know, a lot of other well, stuff. You, you're, 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 and you're I, I will hear yeah. that. You know, the jurors a spot just once in a while. If we're going to really want to push Christmas, we need five or six a day. So we can do that. There's, they, there's so many things. You get somebody's stay fit membership. You could get somebody. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things in downtown we don't think about. You, you know? could also run three or four different spots I mean, yeah. Yeah, saying different things, you know. Uh -huh. Is, yeah, just, can okay, I ask that's a question? Okay. Go ahead. Um, is there a social media site for the city of Trinidad for the tourism board? Yeah, yes. Because, I mean, I've lived here a year. I've never heard the local radio. And I, I've only picked up the Chronicle a couple of times. It's Facebook, huh? And because this town uses Facebook so extensively for communication, I mean, your post on restaurants went crazy. Right, right, and right. I, it did. It wasn't that it was really enlightening to see that post, right. how people unfolded about it. And right. I don't know if everybody saw that mm -hmm. post, but I posted about the restaurants. I got phone calls about but, it. Yeah. it there, that's a whole different other. Yeah, we, do, we do do a tourism board, and there's several of us that we post on the tourism board but, that we put things, and we do have a girl that does repost things on the tourism board. Because what I'm board. saying is that if you pay some money to boost your social media ad and you put an ad on there and you pay some money and you focus it within 25 miles or 50 miles of trade right. ad you get a lot more bang for your buck and you put a few hundred bucks behind it especially right before christmas you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck than you are through a lot of the other post things in that so <coughs> no, it's a it, thank you, Doug. Yeah, that's a great point too. It is to both boost it through Facebook, maybe even individual ads like one about you know restaurants or downtown. It's Visit Trinidad, Colorado is the Facebook page. Because you can use the same ads. It's also, it's also a website. Okay. And just in the, in the, in the same. If you don't boost them, nobody yeah. sees them. You have yeah. to put them on. And you have to get. It, and so if you see those ads, you have to like them because the analytics of the A one. You have and to she like put them the one on. that and you know, Steve. We'll put the one that has the most likes back to the people that haven't seen it yet. Right. I always repost it because there's a lot of people that I know that don't necessarily know that. So when I repost it, they see it, you know, because they make comments. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all about boosting it, like you said, because I know I do that in my shop. It doesn't cost that much. So it Facebook doesn't. gets added okay. to your entourage. Yeah. So maybe we and could tell you want them boost younger, them a little bit. If you want younger demographics, you add it to Instagram. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. just developed an Instagram account. Instagram, yeah. 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 And you can boost it through Instagram and it'll push through Facebook. Push through Facebook, mm -hmm. yes. And maybe we could tell her to boost them a couple ads to boost it to Facebook. And then we'll just we can do a boost for as little as $5. Yeah, yeah. you can do a boost. Really the yeah. more you spend, the more. 20 boost. bucks I've done, and it goes all over. Yeah. Yeah, we can boost it. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. Uh, mission statement? Mission statement. So, you know, I, I guess everybody deals with mission statements differently. And the business I've been in, they've always asked me, and even in my banking one, uh, and I was working on one for the Hilton, is the, is the mission statement of what you are. And then I thought, wow, I haven't seen our mission statement in a while. And how would someone like Chris, that has been on a board, not know the mission statement? We didn't give them the mission statement. So then I went ahead to pull our mission statements offline in the record, the mission statement of record that I had, and I asked Marty uh, what the mission statement was, and it was dramatically different than what I knew, and so then I went to go look, and, and the mission statement of 2015, which was the one I won that was produced by the city of Trinidad, and Kim Marcus wrote this up, says the mission statement I was I was aware of, and, and the one that Ziv put out for the city of Trinidad was the exact same one, and then I found it through Jer Jared T Chatterley and a bunch of other people, but Marty didn't have the same one. So I asked her where that record was, and so let me read you what the mission statement of the City of Trinidad is for the Tourism Board, put out by the city that was developed a few years back, and the copy I'm reading is 2016. The Board's mission is to increase economic development in the Trinidad area by promoting tourism. The Board's objectives herein are fourfold. To attract overnight visitors to Trinidad, and to encourage visitors to extend their stay in Trinidad. Number two, to increase demand for local attractions 
businesses and entertainment by visitors of all ages. Number three, to promote festivals and events in furtherance of encouraging economic development. And four, to foster civic pride and ambassadorship. And I thought that would, for somebody new on the board, it would be important that you would know what our mission was. Can I, can I say something? Mm -hmm. that, to me, that's not a mission statement. Mm -hmm. To me, that is a goals objective. That those are goals. And yeah. a, a mission statement is more very streamlined and yeah. very short. And so that's the, you're right, Mayor. And so the original one is this. That's, that is, this is how to do that. And so the mission statement for the City of Trinidad's Tourism Board is to increase economic development in the Trinidad area by promoting tourism. And then there, that's the how-tos is the four areas. But yeah, that, that is it. So I just wanted us to know that and for us to work on that when we think about our mission statement. Our mission statement is to increase economic development in the Trinidad area by promoting tourism. Makes sense. Yeah. And then if we need to, we need to, have a, we need to have a session maybe after Dawn comes in to figure out what our new mission statement is. Our current mission statement is that. It's a board retreat call all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a joke. And so I just want to say that because mission statements need to be updated at times, right? Everybody needs to update a mission right. statement at a time. So we, then we would need to go back and figure out what that. Well, the, the best indicator is is this financial review that we went through, mm -hmm. and that's going to cover everything that we we're doing with with our monies. Mm -hmm. Is our mission statement. Mm -hmm. And to increase economic development in the Trinidad area by promoting tourism. So. I think that's very simple and yeah. straightforward. Yeah. 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 Do you want to do a review on the next uh, work session agenda? I, I think that mission statement actually needs to be, I, and maybe you're right, maybe it is that sort of a work session, but I think that would take literally, it might, I don't know. Does it, Are we good with that? Do we want to have it where we break out and go any deeper or change it? Or is that good for everybody? And can we say that to new people that are coming in, that our mission and the tourism board is to increase economic development in the Trinidad area by promoting tourism? Yeah. Is that good? It says it right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right there. So that's our mission else statement. We could add to that one. So we'll leave it as is? Yeah, yeah. leave it as it is. Can you send that to me, Sly, so yes. I can start putting it on different materials? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. How did we get things Well, you know, I think what happens is sometimes, you know, uh, you know, teams change, Just, yeah. and then all of a sudden somebody doesn't even know if we have a mission statement. So they see what we do, and they say, oh, well, they're trying to create, you know, but whatever verbiage, or, but it's not exactly the mission statement. We should all know what our mission statement is. And every time we get a, a new board member on, I think that there should be a packet of everything. That there is, and that's there. actually where I pulled that yeah. one yeah. that I sent to you so, was on the and you're kind of up to speed where we are and then that way you can ask questions as to anything that you know you see that could possibly be changed or you could help us in a way you know it's just mm -hmm. it's just good that a new member has the information as to where we're going and once in a while just like in this large ad that you guys are doing it wouldn't hurt to put that great point great point mayor so if you work on that and then okay we'll do that thank you Marty. you're welcome so there's one more item. Actually, there's two if we add Steve back on. Uh, but there's an um, email that I just recently got yesterday from the Fox West Theater Alliance um, inviting us to take part in a Save a Seat campaign that they're running. Um, I will send you that email, but apparently what they're doing is they're asking individuals to select a seat, purchase um, a seat in the theater, um, that you can place your um, a plaque on the back of the seat saying that the seat is sponsored by City of Trinidad Tourism Board, for example. Um, so you get an inscribed seat, or plaque for each seat, uh, that they say remains in perpetuity, so it'll always be there. Um, it, there's a donor recognition plaque in the lobby that you'll be on, and recognition on Fox West Theater website and outreach materials. Um, there's different uh, levels of sponsorship. Oh, okay. um, so I will send you that email and you can take a look at that so that you can review the information for upcoming meetings. 
So, Marty, would that mean if we did that, would that mean that maybe we that we could get a package that includes tickets and maybe we could give, like, tickets away versus sitting in that seat for different functions that happen? It would be an additional expense. I actually looked at the what you can do with it. Uh, will the seat I name be where I am? Let's see. Will I get to choose the exact seat? I don't remember what the question was, but you don't get tickets with that right. sponsorship. You have you're to. You're just sponsoring the seat. You're like sponsoring the seat. Kind of like what we did with the Kachera. Right. Okay. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You're, right, I mean, you're just, just because you have your name on the back of a, a lift seat doesn't mean you get <coughs> to ride it. Well, which reminds me, I just saw an article about Kachera again. Yeah, they're doing the work on the lift. Yeah, we're wishing a lot of that. Yeah. Do you know if they ever did that? Program? I have no idea. Yeah. I can follow up. Could yeah. you follow that up with the law? But who? Because it's totally different well, people. Well, it's totally different people. I'll follow up. Yeah. Is any of this for the Fox Theaters that open? I didn't have it on this. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. I would like to do the C plus, plus mark. We'll have that on the next agenda. Well, we can justify that because that's going to be another attraction. Right. Right. Another yeah, and, and like I was, you know, just thinking of because I gave away free night stays during the first Friday walks, you know, on Fridays, they would choose one name and I, they would give them a free night. I was thinking during first Friday walks, another incentive to do the first Friday walks is that the tourism board. Gives a, gives a free ticket to anyway we can work on that yeah. did you have another one steve um yeah steve i think wanted to talk okay. about new legends real quick uh yes thank you oh. and uh yeah. Yeah. Well, there's uh, only one. Uh, oh, I have a little rack full. There's, there's something <laughs> inside. Do you want one, Phil? Yes. Is there a free gift inside? <laughs> Here's another Free gift here. inside. Actually, Actually, what you're going to want to see is inside are the uh, the little information piece. We love you. Actually, there, Phil. May I get that back to you in a minute? I wasn't expecting you. No, you keep the book. But if you don't mind, I'll read yeah. off of that. And then Maybe look over her shoulder, but I'll, but I'll give this to you at the end. Uh, okay, Steve. Okay, thank you. And basically what, what I'm here to address, uh, the main thing is I am looking for uh, some support for our mission, which is, you just listen to a mission statement. We basically have the same mission. Uh, quick history for you guys that don't know about the magazine. I started in 2016. Uh, because with the extensive background in marketing, I really want to saw some things we need to be doing to bring people here to the twofold mission. One, and just so you know, when I talk about the Sangre de Cristo Legion, I decided that sounded better than the I-25 corridor and the Eastern Slope. A little more romantic, yes. But that covers uh, Rafano, Los Animas, Colfax, and then uh, Union County, which goes out to Texas. Uh, they ask us to be part of the group that I always call the black hole of information, sadly. <laughs> we don't get too much too much info out there about us, even in the state publications. Uh, it's kind of like Colorado stops at Pueblo, and uh, New Mexico stops at uh, Santa Fe with a little towel stone in once in a while. But our area, you guys, I know you hear it all the time. Wow, I never knew you guys existed. Well, I never knew, you know. And that's, that's really inexcusable because we have such a beautiful location. And I agree with, you know, with what Don said. I mean, the architecture, the history, uh, and all the things we have going on here. I think that's changing, though. Oh, that's changing, yeah. Yeah, I like to think we had a pretty good part of that started in 2016 if you'll think back to 2015 if you look how many live events and how successful were they okay when we started and i totally agree with the social media component because we are not just a magazine but our social media component our online presence and our like i said our full social media 
has certainly enhanced all the live events. We have much, much more live events. We didn't just have comedy at all. And, uh, you know, so you look at the events, and calendar wise, if you all would please, I guess we don't have any computer to look at things in here. Uh, uh, the, you don't have access to anything on screen do you, or your computer. Okay. Anyway, so, if, uh, you know, if you please take a look at the website, newlegends.co, uh, and go to our calendar. Uh, you'll see we have the biggest, bestest, up to date calendar for our four county region. I certainly got tired of seeing events falling short. Things that have 20, 30 people at. If you'll think back, you guys used to go to those events, they weren't all that well attended. And now you go to them, and we have people 100, 100 plus uh, here all the time. We weren't expecting this many people, okay? But that's the power of the social media. Uh, people really do go to that. And we do the events at no charge. If it's a true event, we don't charge for event on the calendar. Uh, that used to be what would prevent was the cost of trying to advertise it is not inexpensive in our area to try to reach people. So anyway, so our first, uh, you know, one or two missions equally important is what I consider the shop local and, and, and do events local instead of feeling like you got to run out of town, go out two or three hours to go do something. Uh, or shop or anything else, okay? And then of course, equally as important is to make this a vacation destination. No longer a stop on the way to somewhere else, okay? Uh, destination, so not just a bathroom stop, people are coming here, and especially for the businesses where that impacts it, and I'm gonna say the arts are, are even more because they have kind of high dollar price items Quite often they like to be able to sell, but when we all go on vacation, our dollars are meant for that destination. So it's hard to part with a thousand, two thousand dollars for something here before we get to Santa Fe, for example. And then once we get there, we spend the money and we don't come back like we think we say we might. I mean, I've talked to all the hard people shop for years. They say they totally agree with that. So we need to be the destination. So those dollars are coming here to be spent, okay? And so to do that, uh, create the magazine, which you can tell by the covers. Are you guys all familiar with the magazine? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're familiar with the magazine, you know the covers grab people history, okay? Because we're what I call a well-disguised visitor's guide. That's what we are, we're a visitor's guide. When you get into it, you see that we offer for restaurants, shops, lodging, all the things folks are looking to travel and locally to do, nightlife. Uh, we put everybody in there, no charge. Okay, the people who do support us some get an extra little bonus. So when you look at it, that's the kind of tans. And now we have the QR codes coming out of COVID. That was kind of a COVID plus to that. <laughs> now people know how to use QR codes and they're easy to use. Uh, and those are fantastic because it takes you instantly from print, bam, to the digital world without any big effort. So that's that's really a cool thing that's happening now for the print part of us. Um, so anyway, I mean, a big part of this was you have to reach out to people. Okay, way too much of the stuff we do for tourism is localized. Okay, it's not reaching. Much outside of our town, and so one of the things about the tourism is reaching out a fifty-mile radius of advertising. Right. So that's what we're doing. You know, that's that's reaching reaching out uh, <coughs> beyond beyond a fifty-mile radius. Okay, yeah. that's that's the tourism, yeah. Yeah. right? The right. And that's, and that's exactly what, you're doing. what we do. Yeah. Okay, so just to kind of talk to that on your sheets here. You'll see. Uh, we show, and of course we, you know, we give a little brief thing about what we do. Uh, we're up to 50,000 magazines every quarter. Okay, that's, that's huge for our region. That's more people than we have. Uh, and so, 
That equals about 200,000 plus readers every quarter. That's, that's uh, over 800,000 readers a year. And we reach out, you see this area, this is a five, five state area. Uh, we go up and down the highway, of course, in uh, Colorado, New Mexico. And then the real area that I'm here to talk to you guys about on getting some, some assistance with this is the Flatlanders. <laughs> They're Texas, Oklahoma, and South, South Kansas. Okay? And the reason I say South Kansas, if you're North Kansas, you're going to drive in to Denver. They get into Colorado. But down here, South Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, we are, as I said, it's 32 plus million people in that region. We are the first true mountain experience. And most of them don't know that. What they do, like I used to, is I have a skier, low the mountains from Oklahoma. I used to have, I, I remember Graton because that's where you finally get to I-25 and hang a right. <laughs> and you drive five, four, you know, maybe six, depending on where you're going, but a minimum of four to five hours to get that mountain experience. And so one of the things we're promoting to people is this is the sun grade that we get an extra day of vacation because you lose an entire day just in drive time going elsewhere. And I know I've gotten feedback from people that have thanked us for the magazine. Uh, one I really enjoyed it was a uh, young family that said, uh, you stay with my family two weeks every year to bail. Picked up your magazine, uh, decided we'd give you guys a shot, said goodbye bail. <laughs> I said, man, you're closer, beautiful, we had much fun, it's less expensive. We're not a hard sell. <laughs> you know, we just have to let people know about us. Uh, by using the uh, history angle, what I did with that is that is the hook that makes our magazines fly off the shelf and make people pick up our magazines in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. It's not about them. But we can't keep those stocked. We just don't have enough. People love them there. And I've asked different places, why? Why, why do you think they're so popular? And I get the two answers I wanted to hear. One, they love the history, the stories. Number two, we love the mountains, and we like to know what's going on. So I know it's certainly had an effect. Our tourism has been up over the course to curve to all that for a little bit. But we're rebounding beautifully. As I said, so uh, so I know we've had a, a really uh, great effect on that because we're really reaching out to the people. As you can see, uh, the concentrated area is our region. Uh, we are the most read print publication in our four county region by far. So for local, shop local, and so it's not just a touristy thing for people out of town. People look when we first come out. And if you've seen our stands in Walmarts and Safeway, with the big stands, they hold 150 books. Those, those are emptied out every day at the big spots. And the first, go ahead. What, what are you wanting to do to get the Flatlanders? To okay, the and then you look here, what we're wanting to do is, and I just want to show you on, on page one, so you kind of have an idea where the 50,000 go. 20,000 are in our, in, the, in our concentrated uh, peak area, okay? Uh, these are approximate numbers, but 20,000 goes there. 20,000, I, uh, I just drop ship directly to the distributor in Colorado Springs. Uh, he has uh, over 800 uh, locations in Pueblo, Pueblo West, uh, Colorado Springs, and then this year he moved to uh, also extended to Castle Rock and Parker. Uh, so he takes 20,000 every quarter, and they all go. And then that leaves us about uh, 5,000. We uh, do, oh, I can say I-25 South, which is Las Vegas, New Mexico, of course, and uh, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, and then we also leave some, some like some of the casinos and things like that. Uh, and then that only leaves about 5,000 throughout the West Texas. Uh, Oklahoma and Southwest Kansas. So we have to be very targeted with where they go. Um, but that's, 
that is just a pleasant surprise. When I initially did this, I didn't think that it'd be that well received in those states. And uh, you got a distributor um, in uh, East? I mean, in Texas and Oklahoma? Not yet, because with the 5,000, I just take care of it myself. And sometimes I got some other staff people that will pick it up, people that travel. But, you know, I'm doing those for now. But we will. That's part of moving into it. You know, having more books to go further into those areas. Um, uh, so part of what we're looking at is not just the extra printing cost, but also distribution cost. Okay, because that's that's a huge part. You can print anything you want, but if you don't get it out to people, it's a little pointless. Okay, uh, it's not going to do anything for you. So the other part is the digital presence that we have. Now when we look at the nineteen thousand plus monthly, okay, to the website, and then we have more than that when we take in our uh, Facebook and, and uh, Instagram, Twitter, all that. Um, those are real, okay? Uh, we, don't, we don't have a bunch of you know, bots, robots, and a bunch of stuff from Southeast Asia, Africa, and like this. A lot of times people get fooled by Social media people are going, oh, I can get you 100,000 hits on this. Well, we can too if you want a bunch of fake hits. It's not hard to get hits. It's what you want are the real demographically people you're wanting to reach that are going to truly be potential folks to come visit with us. Uh, so I want you to keep that in mind because that's part of not just a magazine. The magazine and the digital presence work hand in hand. And I'll guarantee you, you know, I saw that because when we couldn't print during COVID, we did see a drop, you know, in our online presence. So it, they do work together. Uh, so on the second page, just a little more explanation about this, what we believe, but that's kind of hand in hand with what you guys have as a mission too. Uh, because I do truly believe, and that's what we're saying, that we, we believe Southern Colorado, Northern New Mexico, the region is a hidden gem. We want to make it a vacation destination of the West by highlighting unique art, culture, and history of the area. And that's one of our little slogans is discover the hidden treasures of the San Andrea Christos. And that's what we do have. Uh, you know, for sadly, for too many years, I, I'd go to meetings and it'd be like Red Tom was always going to get the racetrack open again. Or we were going to have something. There's always something out there, yeah. you know. Instead of looking at what we are, the treasures we already have, and help polish them up, help them market. That's a lot of stuff that we put. You know, we donate a ton of time, uh, myself and the whole team, into helping businesses polish up and helping them market. Okay, because honestly, they just can't afford it. Okay, I mean, I grew up in a small business. I can't afford a marketing department. <laughs> all this stuff. So we help them out all we can. So uh, when we look down here, now you're going to see at the bottom the proposal, okay, is the financial assistance to print and distribute additional New Legends magazines to Texas, Oklahoma, and Southwest Kansas. And so what we're looking for additional year to be able to do that, and it's kind of different increments. If we can do at least 10,000 magazines, okay, that's going to, that's a cost of 5,000 per quarter or 20,000 a year. If we do 20,000 additional magazines, go on there, that'd be 10,000 a quarter or 40,000 a year. And to double what we have now from 50 to 100,000, so an extra 50,000 to try to reach that area, you're looking at 22,000 per quarter, 88,000 per year. Um, I don't know what you guys, uh, how much commitment you'd like to make, but that just shows, uh, you know, what we can achieve with different amounts of dollars. And that's something you guys just need to talk over and decide uh, at what level you'd like to help out to see that much more going out there. Uh, I, I know Chris can speak to Amarillo alone, okay? You know, the 5,000 we have doesn't even make a dent in Amarillo, does it? Doesn't. <laughs> but what we we'll, we'll go to very targeted, what I mean by targeted is like higher end 
uh, hotels and that type of thing, but also uh, what we're going to start targeting um, is the uh, outdoor sports uh, stores because I feel like that's one of our biggest draws to bring people here about that is the outdoor sports. So that's why we got to be very selective. We can't. We don't have dollars to shotgun. We got to be at 22 right percent of the target demographically. So okay. that's that's an idea of what we're doing. Hey, Steve, thank you. And we'll, we'll, okay. look, we'll look at this and uh, but thanks for coming today. And we'll look at this and we'll we'll decide where, we, where we're going to go. All right. Yeah, I will have to say that this magazine is one of the first things that caught my eye in 2000. Uh, 17 when I started looking at trips at. Hey Steve, one thing I was looking for a magazine here that I did not see is and they need some help in trying to recruit uh, uh, I couldn't find people anything. at the college, TSJC. Uh-huh. Oh, for uh, the people who come? Uh, that might be something. They, they, they do. Well, if, if uh, uh, you look at prior magazines, uh, uh, they they decided they didn't want to do anything this time, but usually we have articles from them because uh, all I usually do for them to help them out. But you, but you do something. Okay. But we, we do that, and uh, we need to also kick in some extra stuff for them. Okay, and then they just decided this time not to. But that's a great observation. And I agree. Uh, they're going to get back on. They said they want to get back on the screen. I also didn't see Art O'Kagan here anymore. Uh, I think I saw it. Well, it's, um, it, okay. it's not under art galleries well, it's, or museums. Okay. Oh, you're talking about the, the museum. Art of museum. Okay. Museum. Yeah. Okay. Art Cartopia. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. I'm going to go to that. Okay. How you can miss it. I drive by it in the day. Um, okay. Well, we'll certainly add it in. And at any time, guys, uh, I'm easy to get a hold of. So if you have events, you're not seeing it on our calendar, or if you're seeing businesses or something like that, please get a hold of us. Okay? Right. Thank you. That's, Thank that's you. what we're about. Uh, one other quick thing I would like to mention, though. Uh, if you guys help us out with this kind of stuff, you know, we'll, you'll certainly have some pages that the board kind of controls uh, to promote, make sure you're promoting exactly what you want to promote uh, in the way you want to promote it. And uh, if you guys will step in and help us with our joint mission on what we're trying to do, uh, I'd really like to talk to you. I don't take a lot of time at this meeting. But I'd like to talk to you about us helping you with the calendar and the social media, okay? Because uh, 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 it's constructive criticism. I'd love to see the tourism calendar be much more comprehensive and show more. Because when you spend the time and effort and dollars to get people to come to the tourism page and, and go to the calendar, we don't look like we have much going on. Okay? That's just an honest truth. If you take a look at it and you tell them, Please go look at our calendar. I've heard from when I talk to marketing people that sell ads uh, to you know fit along. Some of the marijuana, a lot of people have corporate marketing people. They get the same thing every time. Wow, that is the best calendar I've ever seen. And okay. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Look at thank you. And we can certainly help each other out a lot with that. So you get your you know, get your money's worth from. Thank you. Dealing with us. Okay, thanks. And I'll give this to you, Mr. Phil. So that's the information proposals. So I have extra letters. Here's the new magazine. Uh, and if, if you want to see that, sorry, I wasn't I would certainly send that to you. Wait, I'd like to see it. Wait, I just say one more thing because I just want to do it because Barry and I had also chatted sort of in an email 
and I found out what that was. So when the people fly into the Colorado Springs Airport, remember out at exit 21, they used to have those boards and we would have slots to put our information for Trinidad in. It's been a few years, but it's a company. Yeah. It's like a consolidated company and they buy those wood yeah. boxes yeah, right. and then they put different people from their community information in them. And we had one. I don't know if we still have one or not. It's that same company that's at all covered. So we certified folder. Yeah, that's it. Folder. So certified folder. So if, you know, I know that this is probably too expensive, but we could buy a slot if we wanted. So just as a side note, I know we talked about that. And I, I wasn't clear. And you were like, I don't know either. I found out it was consolidated folders. Certified. Certified folders, folder. yeah. Okay. I'd like to end this open session at 1013. I can go ahead and call to order the regular meeting. I'd like to call to order a regular meeting of the tourism board at 1014. Campbell? Here. Press? Here. Miller? Yep. Michaels? Here. And then petitions and communications? Petitions and communications? Yes. I just yeah. want to mention a couple of things real quick. Uh, just, you were there last night. We honored uh, Grace Krivik for her time that she does at the Welcome Center. Uh, made a proclamation over for the 10th, I think it was, as Grace Krivik Day. And also, uh, we gave her a small donation, of actually some gift cards to Walmart. Um, I so that. We did that. Nice. And the other thing I want to mention that's upcoming, just for your information, is uh, we've scheduled the uh, uh, legislative day that we have yearly to January the 6th this year. And I'm not sure if you guys are aware of what that is, is that's where we bring in all of our state and uh, legislators as well as representatives from our federal government. Uh, we'll also have uh, DOLA there this year. Uh, it's going to be quite a different year. Um, there's a lot going on, so this particular legislative time frame may go about three, three and a half hours because it's going to be pretty long. Yeah. Well. It's going to be probably, it's going to be at the, at the college. Okay. We usually have it at the college at the uh, uh, at the Pioneer. Yeah. And of course, we'll have the county there, we'll have the city there, we're also going to have, um, there's going to be an agenda that's coming out, we'll get it with the newspaper to print the whole thing. Okay. Great. That's what, and then Mayor, is there anything that we can do by attending that that can help the city of Trinidad, or notes that you might want to? Not necessarily, because like I said, we're, we're working right now with uh, uh, our lobbyists, uh, together with the county, and uh, someone within uh, staff here, they're putting together, we Authorize the agenda, and they're just putting in the details how it's all going to be. Thank you. Mr. Sweet, sir, with the Pony Express. Um, because Camilla has to leave, she wants to know if we can vote on this first. I don't actually, Mr. Sweet, sir, had requested a meeting with the board, and he's from out of town, so he wanted to be heard at 10. We're running a little bit behind. I'm running late. I have to leave. Okay. Okay. Bye. Do you mind, Mr. Sweetser, if we yeah. move forward with a vote real Chief, quick? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Oh, Thank no. you. So you can move through the approval <coughs> minutes and invoices and then do your vote for the board position and then we'll hear Mr. Sweetser. Is that? Okay. Okay. Approval of minutes, November the 10th, 2021. Motion to approve. Any motion to I second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approval of invoices. Did everybody have a chance to Tom. look at them? Yeah. I make the motion to approve our invoices. I'll second. 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 Bills. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? New business. Vote to fill an open board uh, seat. Thank you for coming and doing your interview. I make a motion to approve. 
Uh, I, is that, that how you do this one? Because I don't remember with you, Chris, what we did. Well, it's my personal, so I'm not it's saying. It's actually a recommendation to council. I recommend, I recommend recommendation to council. I recommend to council of the new board member. Because it doesn't have to Very go good. to council. Right. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. It'll go to council the next one, right? The next meeting? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Now we can do Mr. Sweetser's presentation. And I'm sorry I have to leave, guys, but I gotta go get open. All right. Thank you. Thank you for accommodating hey. us. I apologize. No worries. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for taking time to meet with me. I'm gonna pull a chair up here to keep my stuff organized. I, I live up north of Colorado Springs and Monument, and um, I have this bicycle event that's runs every May. In mid-May, we run and run out of Cokedale, and uh, it's called the Pony Express Gravel 160. And um, if you got an electronic device, you can pull up our website. It's just go to Colorado Gravel Grinder Championships.com. That's our website. And um, I just wanted to give you guys kind of an update on it, tell you a little bit about it. Uh, we are now, 2021 was our eighth year and um, to hold this event, we had, uh, your street? Um, 2021 we had 220 entries, uh, 2020 we had 110 the year before that, 65, year before that, 60, year before that, 50, year before that, 45, year before that, 40, and the first year, 35 entries. But this last year, we got 220, and um, super pleased about that. Uh, I started this event totally on my own. Um, again, we started to finish out at Cokedale. We have two distances. We have 160 kilometer, which is 100 miles, and then uh, uh, 85 kilometer, which is a 50 mile distance. And um, mm. 10 years ago, I drove all over, made seven, eight trips down here, drove two, 300 miles of the back roads, and uh, felt that found a really cool route that came and started and finished out of Cokedale. Um, there really is, it wasn't a good connection out of uh, Trinidad to get to that route, uh, but it, it really works well running out of Cokedale, and they've been wonderful to deal with. They've been super to deal with. Um, but do you do, do you go through the county roads like uh, Bon Carbo and, and yeah. get to that? Yeah, it's, in, it's entirely on county roads. We don't go down any state highway. We don't cross any state highway. We do cross one railroad tracks. On that hundred mile, it's a hundred mile loop. Where does it start at? Right in Cokedale. Right in Cokedale. Yeah. And then where does it end? In Cokedale. In Cokedale. So yeah. Okay. Runs north, and on the website, there's you can go down the website. It shows the whole course. Um, it basically runs north and northwest of Cokedale. So do you go into Sarcio Canyon and Whit Canyon? Is, is yes. That, is that yeah, all up in there. Yeah. Did, did you just did somebody just do an article and post something on Facebook about this, about your gravel grind thing from Cocktail? I thought I saw something recently, and I was like, how does that happen that we don't know about this? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there was one right in that area that was posted on Facebook recently. Yeah. Because most of the gravel grind that we know were in town or yeah. east of town. I didn't know there was one in the Cocktail area. Yeah. Um, there might have been. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So um, again, it's that's the route that I found. It's just an outstanding route. Um, now, if you look at uh, go to the, our website and look at the course, if you look really closely at the course, and then you look at the you, you know your new event, it's called the RAD. Yeah. If you look at that course, the, the longest course, mile, it was the 160 miles was the longest one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, that course is basically our course. 
and um, which is fine, which is cool. I mean, they they found they saw the same thing I saw. It's a beautiful area um, because they started in town and basically went north up to uh, where the Ludlow Memorial is. Cross, kind of yeah, cross over there. That's how they picked up all that extra mileage, and um, which is cool. They they saw the same thing I saw. That it's a beautiful area up there. Just amazing area. Um, uh, let me tell you a little bit about my the, the budget. I went through uh, the other day my the 2021 budget and, and what I actually spent money on. And to, just to kind of give you guys a sense, again, we had 220 entries. I usually my wife finagle my wife and family to come with me um, every year. Um, Cokedale, I've been paying them. A flat fifty dollars for the use of their ball their ball field there a, a flat fifty dollars plus uh, this year was a buck fifty ahead and the year prior a buck ten ahead and the year before that years for that it was fifty for years it was fifty cents ahead so the way that works out is this year I paid Cokedale three hundred sixty five dollars year before one hundred seventy one year before one hundred eighty uh, year before 80 and then 75, 72, 70, 67 dollars. So, you know, it's up until this last year really wasn't much. Uh, but um, that's a really good uh, system. It's, it's worked out a uh, flat rate of 50, 50 bucks plus a buck 50 head for their ball field. So, um, and let me, let me kind of, again, I pulled out some numbers from this last year. So, Cokedale, I paid 365 dollars for the use of the field. The other thing that worked out really slick was um, <coughs> there was a restaurant in town. Um, uh, what's the name of the town? Los Angeles. Los Angeles Grill. That restaurant. Yes. They donated lunch for the event. And what we did is um, put a little bucket there and, and we notified, we sent people out. All the participants and emails hey we got lunch was donated however if you want to make a five dollar donation of the fire department we had a bucket there and we raised 250 bucks give it to the city did you have a question no it's good i found where i found it uh, oh. chronicle news did a story about it and posted it on facebook and it says the gravel grinder championship in cokedale season new course record set for the challenging bike event and that's where i saw oh, it because okay. i did see it i was like well, yeah okay super um so so we, we were able to raise it's 250 bucks for their fire department. Uh, spent 150 bucks with the county for a permit. Spent 200 bucks at Walmart for getting food for the event. 200 bucks to the local porta potty guy. My family and I spent 200 bucks on local meals. We paid a local photographer 600 bucks. Uh, we spent 250 bucks at, a, at the hotel, just my family and I. Um, a lot of, like this year, you got like 220 20, yep. people to. How many of how many of those of that count do you think maybe spent the night in Trinidad, or do you think they they went on? Um, I did. You know, let me see if I I was looking at I found some information on that. Um, I had a breakdown of where they came from. Um, but we had about a, we worked out to be a dozen from New Mexico. We had uh, I think six about six from Texas, and then we had some Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Wyoming, uh, smattering of of other states, and then probably. 150 people were Colorado residents. Uh -huh. um, um, so maybe, and also the county this last year, this year, first time worked out really well, fairgrounds. They opened up the fairgrounds in um, um, 20, 30, 20, 30 people. The, the county char with the charge was 20 bucks for one night. And I think it was 30 bucks for two nights, but I think they had, like 30 people camp out at the fairgrounds, which worked out really well. Um, so as far as how many are, 
Stay overnight. Maybe half of them. The, the long race, the 100 mile, we started at, I believe it was 8 a.m., I believe. I believe it was 8 a.m. And with an 8 a.m. start, you know, they want to get there by 7 a.m. Well, that's to get there from Denver or Fort Collins or, I mean, that's a long, that, you got to get up really early. So for those people, and, and half did the long race and half did the shorter race. The long race people, it's highly probable that they stayed overnight Friday night and possibly Sunday night, Saturday night. All right, I just kind of wanted yeah. an idea. Yeah, I think it's fabulous what you're, what you're, that you're doing that, especially in an area that we've been trying to promote bicycles for some years now. Um, wait, do you have an ask for us? Yeah, um, my vision when I started seeing 10 years ago always was to make a two day event. Uh, it, it hasn't happened so far, um, so why not make it a two-day event? There, what involved making? What would that involve? Um, I've looked at areas, and I think that what I've always felt was a good opportunity would be to add a second day, a Sunday event that would start in Trinidad and go south and southeast, uh, that way and that way. Um, don't go. There's nothing really north of here that's very appealing. Going south and east, south, of course, you got uh, Fisher Peak, which there is a route going, a loop you could do that is beautiful, beautiful route, route um, going, you would go southeast down the New Mexico border and then west to the, I think it's, there's a state park there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and then go head north from there up over the peak. And there is actually a map show, a county road that drops to go the go northeast corner of Fisher Peak. There's a map show County Road, but it's um, there's a gate on that road, on, a, on some a private gate that's been put up, and I'm not in a position to. That's got to be dealt with um, and, and opened up to the public. So you're you're considering a two-day event. Yeah. And um, and what can we do for you to help there? Um, to make the two-day event happen, well, first of all, I wanted to roll for the one-day uh -huh. event. Absolutely, we've, we've hit 220. I certainly hope it continues to grow uh, by opening up the fairgrounds. That's helped. It brings more activities here. Um, did, you, did, you, did you deal with the fairgrounds itself or with the county commissioners? I uh, dealt with Phil Dornham. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's super positive to deal with. Yeah. He's been wonderful to deal with. Um, that's helpful uh, to get to get the one day event to continue to grow in Cokedale. We could use some support from the county uh, for traffic control. This last year, I had to hire a sheriff to, for a few hours, and we could use two, two sheriff cars for the day um, to get that to continue to grow. And to add the second day, um, the route that, that I looked at. We would start and finish by the Toyota dealership over in that area on a Sunday morning. Um, had um, there's a back road. Yeah, no, we, we I, I trust all what you're yeah. doing because you've been doing it for years, and I was surprised when I saw that article. And 220 people bringing it to Trinidad for a bike event, gravel grading is great. So, what can we do for you? Yes. Um, Help with the county. I need some county support for traffic control for the one day event in Cobedale. We're really pushing our limits there. Um, for the two day, to bring it to a second day, obviously get the city to let us hold it starting uh, by the Toyota dealership there, traffic control. Um, um, with the RAD, you guys closed off Main Street. I, I don't envision for this event doing something like that. Um, uh, I envision having a, a much smaller side street start and finish there, but we would go down Main Street for the start, mm -hmm. and then it would peel off. The, there's a dirt road, one right. off to the south. Our, <coughs> like, you would have to get with the county and the city to, to make that happen. <coughs> what we mainly help is for advertising for your event outside radius of 50 miles. So what could we do for you in that thing is, is what... We would like to know. 
the most direct. Um, let's see. Let's see. I got some here. Um, this is one of my marketing has been through emails. I, I work in the <coughs> industry and um, industry? bicycle. Bicycle industry. And and the company I work for, we have an email list of seven to ten thousand names, and I've been using that list. And that works okay, but it's not great because uh, national, international list. In reality, is only maybe twenty percent of those people would ever come to Colorado. Also, the other list I've developed is just because now we've on year eight we have all sorts of people that have come, and we've got about a five hundred to seven hundred name email list. So that's our, that's one key. That's our number one. This is our number two. Um, I'm on my. Th fourth printing of 10,000 of these babies mm -hmm. and over the years I go to all sorts of events and go and put these on car windshields at all sorts of events in, around Colorado and Wyoming and Kansas. And I, I personally just think that uh, it's really wonderful that you've come this far and we're just finding out about you now. You may qualify for a grant program from us. Um, I'm not quite sure when grants come out next. They come out in January. Yeah. March, 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 March 1st. first. The deadline of March 31st. When, when is this event? In May. May. In May. Yeah. That might be too late. That much. would. Well, if he has a package together, and uh, might get with the parks recreation folks too. For... I've been in contact with him a little bit uh -huh. prior to. The... So we never met in person. I'm Jared Chadley. Oh, okay. I'm the, the director of the office of our recreation. Whatever we can do through our office to help promote your race, mm -hmm. we are more than happy to to do that. We your event is exactly the kind of events that we want to host here in the area. So anything we can do, I'm glad you're here. This is the, the obviously the, the Lodgers Tax Board or Tourism Board. I get confused with the names of, them. but. Uh, this is the exact place to, to come for that kind of support to help market your event. So when you come, if there's anything I can do to help you work with the board, with the tourism board, please, please, please let me. Yeah, let's look at these things first. Over there, it's a lodger's tax board, and yeah, right home no, no, a lodger's tax. I get confused. You're right. I, even even while the laws were going through, and I was reading laws, they're different. It is the tourism board supported by the lodger's tax, but you're there correct. You there's lots of places that just do the lodger's tax. So whatever. I don't want to interrupt your presentation to the final job, but if there's anything that we yeah. can do through the city in the office about outdoor recreation, all you got to do is say the word. With us, with us, we would like you to maybe get with a, a grant, do a grant, and present that to us, and then we can vote on that for an outside, an outside 50 mile radius of advertising for this event. That's where we can help you. Okay. Yes, I'm okay. so glad Jared is here because okay. the things that you're asking of us really isn't our position. It's Jared's position, and he is shaking his head up and down. He is so excited that and saying that that's the kind of event, and he would help you. He is a, he's dynamite, and obviously you are for doing this for this many years and now coming forward. And we could help with some funding, and that would go through a grant program, and Marty could get you that that paperwork and you would fill it out. Okay. Because I'm, I'm kind of at a loss of where to go between the city and the county, where the next step is. I would talk to Jared. Jared's the guy. He's going to direct you in, in that yeah. sense. Here's your card, so I'd be your liaison with the, with the city. Anything you need from the city, I also have all the contacts for the county. So the way I can help you with it the county, too, I have all the contacts for the county. So the way I can help you with the county, too, I am here to help you. Okay, super. Yeah. Um, hard working, may wear shorts in 22 degrees. Weather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're not <marketing>. <laughs> the, the, the quick direct comment on this is if you guys can do, you know, the, the RAV, they, they have, at most events have a rider packet they give out to the participants with brochures and stuff. If you can convince those people to put their this in their rider packet, that would be fantastic. Not a problem. Yeah. Right there. Yep. Yeah. So um, I guess I'll talk to Jared, and you guys know about me. Um, I, I want to try and make this a two-day event. I don't. It may be too late for this year. Maybe not. I don't know. I, the, I, I would. I would for next year. I would uh, put a grant in. If you have a hold your thing, if you have. Uh, I think it means for planning for oh, this year. Yeah, because yeah. I will open up registrations January first. Okay. 
And um, I mean, and we don't have to have all the details nailed down at all, but it, um, I floated the idea in emails to participants that the concept of a two day event in. in well, the Um, so there, there may be other platforms that there could be funding for, but you know, Marty's the girl on that side, and Jared's the guy, and, and I think personally, I support it. I'm so excited you're here. I didn't know you, you, you were even doing it until the other day when I strolled upon it. I said, "What the heck is going on in championship here?" Yeah, keep it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> keep it quiet. Um, so I, I won't take any more of your time. Um, again. Uh, it, we could it, we could go with 2022. We don't have to have all the details, but by January 1st, I need to, when we open up registration, have it announced that the concept that the course hasn't be, doesn't have to be nailed down. Um, but at least uh, because then people will want to register it, and um, uh, most of the details have to be nailed down. I am so glad you came down to introduce yourself to us today, and I I am excited that we have another great uh, gravel grinding race going on in Trinidad. And by coming here, you've got Jared, Jared as a connection, yeah. and, and Marty to yeah. just tell you how a grant program works. Okay. And then uh, you can go from there. Super. All right. Great. Appreciate your time, guys. And, um, yeah, thank you. I know it was an extra trip to come all the way down here just for us to say, hey, we love it, but now we know who you are, so it's great. So yeah. thank you so much for your dedication on coming down. And I'll, I'll be meeting with Copedale this evening. Uh-huh. And so, um, and again, they've been really good to deal with. And and, um, and I love that that race uh, has a feature in the downtown area because that's, that's our platform is to drive economic impact to the downtown area for tourism. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a motion. Make a motion. We adjourn. I second that. Anything else, Marty? That's it. Okay. And at uh, 1040. Next meeting. January. Uh, I don't know what the date is. The second Wednesday in January. So the eleventh? Would it be the eleventh? Yeah. 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 Don, we we'll look forward to having you. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to joining you. Thank you yeah. so much. You got to get past that city council as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got to do mine. You know, do I need to present soon, to them so. too? Do they want me there? Or is it just It'd be good for you to be there. It'd be nice to have you there to make people recognize.